We now return to the practical guide to the universe on the Learning Channel. Stars begin to take shape inside clouds of gas and dust known as solar nebulae. The nebulae that gave birth to our sun was the remnant of at least two supernova explosions. At first, the cloud seems shapeless and random. Atoms attract each other and collect into long filaments and puffball shapes. Slowly, the pull of gravity sets the cloud in more orderly motion. Like a hurricane in space, the gas and dust begin to swirl around a common center of gravity with swirling eddies in the outer areas. At the center, drawn by the increasing gravity, a huge amount of mass gathers and begins to heat up. If gravity were the only force involved, the cloud would stabilize in the swirling disk shape and the heat would slowly radiate away from the center. You and I would not be here in that case because the sun and planets could not form. Fortunately, there's another force at work in this would-be solar system, magnetism. The heat at the cloud center electrifies it, generating bands of magnetic force. These bands sweep into space, tying the whirling center to the material in the flattening disk. The resulting drag on the central blob slows it down, keeping it from flying apart. The cords also whip the disk material around faster, allowing would-be planets to stabilize in their orbits rather than falling ever closer to the center. Eventually, the center of this storm becomes so massive, so crushed by its own gravity, that the fires of nuclear fusion ignite at its core and the star is born. Some five billion years ago, it was our own sun that flared into life out on the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. It's a rather modest star and orbits the center of the galaxy every 225 million years. What this means is that much like the planets orbit around the sun and our moon orbits around the earth, the sun too has an orbital path. In fact, our sun is moving through space as we speak at the incredible speed of 700,000 miles an hour, carrying us and all the other planets along with it. But the thing that almost no one realizes that is a very big deal to the people who believe in the extinction of life on Earth every 30 million years by comet shower is that the Sun is not moving around the center the Milky Way in a circle or an ellipse like planet moving around the Sun because it's not orbiting a point mass like the Sun uh, uh, like the Earth going around the Sun we're orbiting through through this spiral galaxy that's got a bulge in the center and a, and a pinpoint center and all this other stuff in the spiral arms. And our orbit is constantly wobbling up and down. The energy our sun produces is created at its core and can take up to 100,000 years to reach the surface. It bangs around internally, being absorbed and re-emitted millions of times in the largest layer, called the radiative zone. This zone extends from the core to within 90,000 miles of the surface, where a region called the convective layer begins. In the convective layer, the sun's material is cooled. Huge looping currents called convection cells carry heat from the radiative zone below to the surface. Here, the sun resembles an immense boiling pot, but one that's 90,000 miles deep and whose bubbles are bigger across than the state of Alaska. These bubbles burst when they reach the visible surface of the sun, called a photosphere, and are what give the sun its granular appearance when viewed from a solar telescope. This is where the sun creates nearly all the visible light we see. Above the photosphere lies the first part of the sun's atmosphere, a thousand mile wide band of thin gas called the chromosphere. Best viewed during a total eclipse of the sun, this pinkish-red halo boils with activity. Spikes of hot gas called spicules shoot up through the chromosphere constantly, rising to 6,000 feet at 10 to 20,000 degrees. Spicules are the most prominent feature of the sun's atmosphere. The uppermost atmosphere of the sun is called the corona. This tenuous ever-changing layer can sometimes extend out beyond the orbit of mercury. Its wispy gases reach incredible temperatures between one and five million degrees, 
but are so thin that little radiation comes from them, which is fortunate for us. You see, the corona produces only deadly ultraviolet radiation and x-rays. We'll return to the practical guide to the universe on the Learning Channel.